Have you ever been sitting in church and you hear your pastor say this phrase? Well, in the original Greek or Hebrew, there is some nuance that we don't find in English. And then they go on and sure enough, what they share adds a, a depth of understanding and a richness to the passage that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Well, you realize that you can do the same type of deep word and phrase study uh, research and get that nuance when you're studying the Bible on your own. And no, you don't have to have a Greek and Hebrew degree. In fact, I'm proof of that because I do these kinds of studies all the time and I do not have a Greek degree or a Hebrew degree, but I know the tools to use and I want to share three of them with you in today's video. In case you and I haven't met yet, I'm Keith Farron, your Bible coach. My passion and the goal of everything on this channel is to help you move from should to want when it comes to reading, studying, understanding, remembering, applying, and yes, enjoying God's Word. So if you could use some help with that, you're going to want to click that button so you don't miss a video. So here's what I want to do in this video. I want to show you three different sites that you can use to do research. The first two are free. The third is a paid resource that I actually helped create called Bible Toolbox. I use it every day. It can do just some unbelievably amazing things, and we will get to that at the end. But I want to show you first the free resources that you can dive into. The first is Blue Letter Bible. Dot org. Now, with blueletterbible.org, there is a lot that you can do on this site, and I'll probably do a deep dive review at some point. But for now, I'm going to show you just how to do a word study. So let's say that we are looking at Philippians 3, 14, where it talks about pressing on toward the goal or pursuing the goal to, to, toward the prize. And so pick the translation that you like put in that passage, and, and you'll head right there. It'll actually give you, one thing I do like about Blue Letter Bible is that when you type in a passage, it actually gives you the context of the entire chapter at the time that you're studying the verse. And so just context is a great way to understand it. But for us specifically, we're going to go here. So in the CSB, it's I pursue as my goal instead of I press on toward the goal. But there's this little button over here called Tools. And if you go to the Tools button, then it opens up all kinds of things. The interlinear, which just means you've got the original language, so Greek or Hebrew, Aramaic, next to the English. So that's what interlinear means. But you've got different Bibles, so you can compare different translations of that cross-references, all these different kinds of things that it does. But just on the page that opens up right away is the interlinear, and you would go on in the English, uh, it uses the NASB, New American Standard Bible, as its reference, but you would just go down to find the word or phrase that you are doing. So this happens to be the first one. I press on toward the goal. And so there's the phrase right there, and you'll see. It'll tell you what the original Greek word, dioko, and this little number, you don't, Strong's is the, there was a, a guy named James Strong who was a, a, a scholar at back in the 19, late 19th century and in 1890, they put the Strong's numbering system, which has just become a universal standard for making sure you have the right Greek or Hebrew word. So I always use the example of the word love. You've got the Greek word agape, phileo, and eros, and you'll want to know in a passage which one you're using. So those three words for love that are translated in English love will have different Strong's numbers. And so all you need to know is click the number. <laughs> so when you, when you click that Strong's number, it will open up the word study, or phrase, if it's a phrase, and it will give you this overview. So everything from learning how to pronounce it, it'll read it to you, giving you the root and all these different things. But what I love about the Blue Letter Bible is that built right into the site, they have not only as strong as the most popular kind of common numbering system, but the Vines Expository Dictionary, which you'll see right here uh, down below kind of the summary there, is kind of the, the most well-known kind of word study 
Bible dictionary, if you will, and the and they've got the complete exposit uh, Vines expository dictionary. And when you click it, because you're already in the right number, the right Strong's number, it will only show you the entry for that specific Greek word. So if there are multiple Greek or Hebrew words, it will just show you, because you've clicked it when you're already in it, it will show you the, the one that pertains. So if you want to go deeper in there, you don't want to read it in a little box, then you can just click this view entry in context and you can go deeper to follow after and uh, to follow up or out to the end. Uh, uh, and so you've got all, all of this that you could, you could find some of that nuance. And again, all of that is free. That is the, the easiest way to do a word study uh, is to just go put in the verse, uh, go to the phrase, click the Strong's number, and you can go uh, get that overview on that one page and go deeper with the vines. So that is the Blue Letter Bible. So next, let's take a look at BibleHub.com. Uh, BibleHub is, again, like Blue Letter Bible, there is way more that you can do with this site than just word studies, but uh, it is a fantastic site for word studies. And here is how Bible Hub works if we were going to do the same passage. So you can go and you can select books and everything, but if you know the passage that you're looking at, then uh, you can just go in and type in the, the verse. And what one thing I love about uh, Bible Hub is the very first thing that happens is you go to a page where it shows you that verse in many, many, many different translations. It shows you so many different translations that that is, I think, one of the best ways to start a word study is to just simply see how do different translators who know the Greek or the Hebrew, how do different people say it? You can almost find a lot about that word simply by reading all of these different popular translations and how different translators who are experts in the in the languages have translated it. So you'll see, I press on, press on, press on, uh, but then you'll, you'll, as you come down, I pursue as my goal and I run toward the goal to take the victory. And there's so many different little nuances you can get and it automatically does that as soon as you uh, get there. And then if you want to go deeper with that, of how is that same word used in different places in the Bible, then you can look right here on that same page. It's not always an exhaustive list uh, of every single use in the Bible, but it will give you a lot of different uh, verses that will give you nuance and context of how different authors in Scripture Right, because one book might be written by Paul, another might be written by um, Peter or John or Luke or Moses. I mean, depending on where you're you're getting it, and uh, and so you've got some different ones that you can compare there, and you can do all of that really, really quickly. Well, here are some of the uh, some of the unique features I think of of um, Bible Hub is you'll see up here. I mentioned when I was talking about Blue Letter Bible that the interlinear. Well, you can go in to this interline. Interline. It, it doesn't have the whole word in there, but that is you uh, the the Greek and Hebrew interlinear. So whether you're in the Old Testament and it's translating it from Hebrew, it'll happen automatically. The original language will be there. Once again, you'll find the. Uh, original, uh, you'll find the original Greek. I don't read Greek, <laughs> but uh, but the t across the top is again that standard Strong's numbering system that will go in. So you can kind of see literally how things are are translated here, and then you get, find your phrase again, which the English is there in red, and you click that, and it it gives you again this kind of overview page, but uh, but it will. It also gives you a a lot of the different uh, 
at, at this point, it will give you a lot of different places where it's used. So you can f do your own kind of cross-referencing to compare different translations and all that. So it'll tell you that this is the Strong's Greek word. This is the number. And that word is used 45 different times in the Bible. And it uh, gives, gives you that. And here again, is you, it takes you to the summary page. But there are, for this particular word, there are four different resources that are right there available in Bible Hub that you can do different kinds of word studies. So you can go in here and get you into word languages, and I don't do a lot of that as far as the word origins and all that kind of thing. But, uh, but it will give you different levels of depth to your word study. So for you, the summary page might be enough. But if you want to go, again, to like this is the actual Strong's Exhaustive Concordance and the entries found for that, and then um, the Englishman's, which I believe that when you click on Englishman's, it will actually show you all of the occurrences. So you can go and, and go as deep as you want. Some of those, those nuances of having that interlinear, but then having those resources that you can click into and just look at one resource at a time, depending on what type of word study you want to do. Again, the summary might be enough, but you might want to do a really rich kind of, hey, what is every place that this particular word, because not every word is used 45 times. Some words are only used two or three times in the Bible, but to look at those passages and have somebody else do all that research for you, uh, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, the final resource that I want to share with you is Bible Toolbox. This is what I refer to as guided AI. <laughs> My friend CJ and I, uh, he owns a software company, and he and I were dreaming kind of as AI came out, it's like, how could we take AI and use it to uh, help people study the Bible? The power of the resource and the, just the wide range of literally millions of resources that it has access to. But how can we put guardrails on that and use that for Bible study so that people can really trust what they're seeing? And again, like those other two sites I showed you, Bible Toolbox can do way, way, way more than word studies. And I'll link here uh, above as well as in the uh, description below to the to uh, a walkthrough of a lot of what Bible Toolbox can do. But uh, but for what we want to want to do, if you if you just if you go to keithferron.com slash Bible Toolbox, you'll land on this special page where because I'm one of the creators of it, I have a special link that you can get in the description that will give you uh, give you a big chunk off, uh, a big, big discounted price. So whatever we have as the best price that you can get, uh, we'll discount it there. And so uh, you can you can access that. If you go right to BibleToolbox.ai, you're going to see the full price. But if you use the link that's in the description, then you'll get at least a third off. So what I've done is I've gone into that same passage of how I would use Bible Toolbox. With Bible Toolbox, you're not just doing research one time and then the next time you want to do research, you are uh, you're going back and having to re research <laughs> on, the, on the word. And here you can save this all into your Bible toolbox library. So if you're studying the book of Philippians, you can keep all your word studies in one place and keep adding to uh, the kind of that word study. But what I've done here is just to save time of the searching, and I'll show you uh, kind of what, what it does. But you can go, and we've built in many of the most popular translations. And so if I'm going to the Berean Standard Bible, which is actually the Bible that is the primary Bible from the Bible Hub team and is a public domain uh, translation, so you can use that in your resources and Bible studies that you're creating. You can print things. So I just love the Berean Standard Bible. So when you go into here, you can choose. I want you again. You can do a ton of different things, but uh, for today, looking at the Bible study, what do I want to do? I want to be kind of more like a biblical theologian, do a deep study, and I want to do a word study. 
So I'm not studying, again, topics, books, Bible passages, all that, but I want to do a word study. And within word study, there are four different options. And I've kind of pre-done them so that you could see here. But the first one is the word or phrase as it relates to a specific scripture. So again, if you want to find the right Greek or Hebrew word, then to be able to say, I want to do research on press on toward the goal, I'm, I want to look at what does it mean to press on, then I choose the translation at the top, and I can say, as, as it relates to Philippians 3.14, then I want to look at press on, because there might be another Greek word for press on that's used in a different part of Scripture, and so you can look at, uh, you can look at that. And when you click Generate Content, this is what it then uh, came up. So it has the con it got has the verse itself in the BSB because that's the translation that I chose, and it gives kind of this little overview intro, and then it it does in here as it relates to this passage. It gives the context of the passage. It gives the phrase itself and what that Greek is, and then what you're pressing on towards. So it gives some some application and some insight. And so it's a word study that is done in the context of that passage, which can give you some application points, some things to ponder. And it's just a really powerful way in literally a few seconds to be able to do a rich word study as it relates to a specific passage. You can also, again, this is not an exhaustive concordance, but kind of like with the other, other site, where uh, you can you want to look at where does press on uh, f show up in different passages and when I searched on that and and I I found that when I then take the actual Greek word when I do the first one as it relates so I know I've got the right Greek word then I can actually just copy that Greek word and and put that in instead of the English phrase and I find here are a several different places that that Greek word is used. So I could do create my own cross-reference list by going to that second one, to the third one, which is just a one paragraph overview. If I just want a really simple, I, I just want to go a little bit deeper. I don't want to go so far into the whole thing. I just want to go a little bit deeper into this. Then I could do a one paragraph overview, which again gives me the Greek word and has some different uses. It's to pursue or to follow after and, uh, and gives a little bit more context. Or one of my favorites is to do a deep dive word study. And I know that this is my, that this is the Greek word that I want to do. And so if I put the actual Greek or Hebrew word in there in a deep dive, and then I generate the content, you'll see that it will spit out a huge, deep word study that is just easy, easier to, to read through and manage than some of what you'll find piecing together on the site. And so I've got... Uh, there, the, it's got the primary meaning, got places, and look at this. I even use the example of Philippians three fourteen, even though we're not in the spot where three, where we're studying three fourteen. I'm just doing wor a deep word study on Dioko, and and so I and it's used my when it does reference things, it uses the translation that I've asked it to use. So if you are like the NIV or the ESV or some or the King James, you can you can choose that and it will give you those examples as well. And so it gives you a neg the negative connotation of it, what it means for spiritual pursuit, some different references. And so to be able to do that kind of word study, and then you can again move that content over. And so I've just moved it all over and then I can save that uh, as a as a document in there that will then show up. I can export it to, once I've done that, I can export it to Word and do more editing and formatting if I want to, or I can just simply export as a PDF if I'm creating a Bible study resource uh, for my youth group or for my church or something like that. I can just export it there. I can name it whatever I want, and then you'll see it shows up in the document manager. So if next time I log on to Bible uh, Toolbox, 
I can go in if I want to do a little bit more on that word study. That's what I've saved it as, and I can just go and go right back in. So those are that is a kind of a deep dive walkthrough of three different ways that you can do a word study. So check out Blue Letter Bible. Uh, Dot com check out biblehub.org and uh, I think I just missed up both those <laughs> I think that uh, what blueletterbible.org and biblehub.com and and check out Bible toolbox as well so you've got the links down to get the discount on Bible toolbox and we always have a 30-day money-back guarantee so if you check it out and it's not a resource for you then we definitely don't want to keep your money on that but it has been fun to really help people who maybe don't have a library don't have knowledge of how to use all the different tech and don't want to wade through all the different resources to be able to do really really rich Bible study so check out Bible toolbox the links are down below and as always if you found this beneficial I'd love to know in the comments what you found helpful uh, what resources you're gonna check out what was new to you in this if there's another video that you'd love for me to do a deep dive on or a feature of one of those sites that I could dive into let me know that in the comments like this video subscribe to this channel share this video with a friend and as always I will see you in the next video